Hello and thank you for watching. Today I would like to discuss one of the most important current topics in the automotive world, e-mobility. I'm glad to welcome Stefan Zitzala here with me today, who I believe understands the challenges of e-mobility better than anybody else at Infineon. He is heading the high power semiconductor business within our automotive division. Now Stefan, before we talk about e-mobility, we obviously have to look at the current global situation with the COVID-19 pandemic that has hit automotive supply chains around the world very hard in the first half of this year. How has Infineon um, managed to deal with this? How have you managed to keep operations running and also supply to your customers? Yes, Oliver, for sure. The COVID-19 pandemic is a huge challenge for society and for sure also economy. Infineon could contribute by securing the supply chains with important products for key industries. So for example, the way we approached this was that we monitored very closely our suppliers, obviously our own operations and the demand of our customers. In this way, we could detect very quickly if a customer is in lockdown and we could redirect products which were produced for a specific customer which didn't need it anymore to other customers which had additional demands maybe in a completely different region. By such an agile procedure we contributed to the economic uh, stability of our customers. Obviously it also helped our own uh, business and overall we could contribute to the overall economy with providing stability. Stefan, let's now turn to our focus topic for today. You personally have been working in e-mobility now for six years, I believe, and the industry has obviously discussed this topic for even longer. I would like to know what you think. Is e-mobility already a mainstream technology or will it be anytime soon? I think by now this is out of questions. Electric cars will come and uh, we see it happening right now. More and more electrified car platforms are launched to the market and I'm very happy to see that even large established automotive manufacturer dedicate complete factories to electromobility. Having said this and coming back to the question, uh, to your first question about the corona pandemic, there might be even a mid-term, long-term positive effect of the corona pandemic. Because governments worldwide are subsidizing their industries, putting out uh, monies to keep their economy up and running. And many governments invest either directly in electromobility via subsidies or incentives, or they invest into the infrastructure for charging. Now, Stefan, this is a very interesting point you just mentioned. And in fact, I was going to ask you now about the incentive programs that certainly play a big role, also CO2 regulation. Uh, but what about the organic consumer demand? Will that pick up too? Well, as mentioned, it comes out of several directions and you are absolutely right. Legislation is the main driver for the introduction of electrified cars. But it starts really mild. So the first step towards an electrified powertrain are so-called mild hybrid electric vehicles. Cars which have an internal 48 volt systems to support the main combustion engine. And uh, for example, with such a 48 uh, volt vehicle, you can cruise with your electric system on the highway. Um, and uh, by introducing this in, a, in this way, many of us will not even recognize that electrification comes. It just comes in a very soft way. And then the next step are hybrid electric vehicles with a high voltage systems. Uh, so all the plug-in electric vehicles uh, which combine, uh, I would say, the best of two worlds. The, the long range of the combustion engine and uh, the electric motor for the short distances, uh, for example, for the daily commute. And last but not least, a fully battery electric vehicle um, obviously uh, brings the highest CO2 saving or 
in other words, I'm absolutely confident that uh, within this decade we will see 50% of all newly sold cars being equipped with either a mild hybrid uh, system, uh, uh, a full or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, uh, or being a battery electric vehicle. And maybe before, before you ask now the next question, there's one additional point uh, most people don't even think about. Once you have driven an electric car and enjoyed the immediate torque, you don't want to switch back to a combustion engine anymore. So there will be a lot of fun in driving an electrified car. Now, when it comes to cost, range or charging time of an electric vehicle, the battery is obviously a very important factor that's also broadly discussed. Compared to that, where do you see semiconductors? What role do semiconductors play? Between the battery and the electric motor on the other side, there's one system in between. That's the inverter, the so-called traction inverter. And the key component of a traction inverter is typically a power module with power semiconductors. This is uh, one example uh, of a power module. Actually, you see Infineon's hybrid pack drive power module, which is the de facto standard in the industry today. Now, the, the important task of a power module is to help to transform the energy in the battery to the energy in the motor in the most efficient way. And a tiny gain in efficiency can have a 5 to 10 percent improvement in range. But we also contribute by uh, having uh, less losses, less heat dissipation, and therefore save the car manufacturers uh, money which they need to spend on the cooling system. Are we done? For sure not. Uh, there's a lot to do and uh, in, in, in principle the goals for the semiconductor industry match obviously the goals of our customers. We need to increase range, we need to decrease charging time, we need to reduce cost and we need to do this at the proven quality level because nobody wants to sit on the highway with a broken car. Now, when we talk about the energy that comes from the battery and goes through the inverter to the electric motor, you just mentioned that efficiency is very important, obviously, um, in this process. And if we talk about efficiency here, we obviously have to discuss silicon carbide. In short, it stands for higher efficiency and also a higher performance. And I would like to know, where do you see that go? Will we in the future see silicon carbide only, or will there also be classic silicon chips in electric vehicles? Silicon carbide is a great technology and uh, Infineon was one of the pioneers uh, working with this uh, new technology. The, the, the big benefit you already mentioned, it's a higher efficiency. So if you look at this, then uh, especially for cars with large battery, a silicon carbide based traction inverter can be of very high value uh, because it improves the efficiency of the overall uh, system. Looking to the onboard charger, with silicon carbide you can build the onboard charger much smaller, so much more denser. And uh, this obviously also helps, especially in plug-in electric vehicles, where you have a lot of space constraints because there needs to be an electric uh, traction motor and the combustion uh, engine. And therefore, we see silicon carbide as a significantly growing uh, technology. For sure, there are also other solutions for, for example, for uh, take a low-end city car, which does not need a super long range, uh, but uh, must be foremost cost effective and uh, reliable. And for those cars, it's very clear uh, the IGBT based inverters are a very, very good uh, solution. Um, and therefore, um, it's not an either or, it's very clearly an end, uh, what we see between the two technologies, silicon carbide and IGPT.
Now, Stefan, I understand it depends a lot on the concept for an electric vehicle that the OEM has, uh, which technology they choose. But beyond choosing the right technology, where do you see the main challenges for the OEMs to ramp e-mobility? And more importantly, how do you think you and Infineon can support the customers? If you look on electromobility, this is for sure the biggest and fastest transformation of within the automotive industry since its existence. So our customers, be it our tier ones or the car makers, need to introduce a completely new technology very quickly. In order to be successful, there must be more than just the right performance and the right cost. It must be made sure that the quality of the electrified cars match the customer's expectations. And here Infineon can make a huge contribution. Just to give you one example, last f uh, fiscal year, Infineon shipped roughly 7 billion devices into automotive applications. And our manufacturing was perfect the complete year, except 3.4 seconds. And uh, this highlights a bit uh, what it means to be successful in the automotive semiconductor industry. The parts are so vital for the car makers that it's very important that the quality is as high as possible. And of course, uh, we need to have very innovative ideas uh, to make sure the car manufacturer can meet their targets. And let's take an example from the 48 volt mild hybrid systems. A mild hybrid system needs to go into a car which was designed and developed for a combustion engine. So space is very small. Now, we work with a partner, a PCB manufacturer, um, the company Schweizer, to embed power semiconductors within the PCB. And this solves two problems. One is obviously it improves performance because uh, the power semiconductors can be much better integrated into the system, into the cooling system uh, of the car. But second, it also redu it reduces uh, space demands. So um, that's a very innovative way to uh, make sure that um, the automotive industry can meet their targets. And our contribution is innovation, at the highest possible quality level. And what about volume? If unit sales kick in, as you described, will Infineon be ready to supply this amount of chips that is then going to be needed? Yes, Infineon, Infineon is the largest producer of power semiconductors in the industry. And uh, there's one very obvious difference from us to all of our competitors. Our competitors produce power semiconductors for automotive applications on 200 millimeter wafers. Infineon produces them on 300 millimeter wafers. So it's very clear that one can scale up manufacturing much quicker with a 300 millimeter wafer than with a 200 millimeter uh, wafer. And this is also the reason why Infineon continues to invest in capacity for our power semiconductors. We just now built a new factory in Villach for, uh, for a 300 millimeter power manufacturing line and this will help us to be ready uh, for the upcoming ramp of electromobility. Now having said this, um, having one factory is good. Having two factories based on a multi-site production concept is even better. And for 300 millimeters, uh, just to take one example, we will have through two factories, one in Dresden, the other one in Villach, which are able to manufacture the same devices. So this even increases flexibility for a steep ramp even more. Thank you very much, Stefan. This was certainly very interesting. And I'm excited to see Infineon right at the heart of such an important topic. It was great talking to you. Thanks for sharing your thoughts also with our audience.